The Legend of Sleeping Bear by Kathy Jo Wargan. The great bear sleeps, waiting for her cubs, who have now turned into Manitou Islands. The wind sweeps on. The story of their trip across Lake Michigan has become a legend for young and old, which is dedicated to your imagination and fantasy that you may enjoy it forever and ever as the wind blows. For all mothers who love and dedication will be rewarded. Long, long ago, before voyagers paddled canoes down rivers and streams, before mighty lumbermen cleared forests with sharp, shiny axes, before wooden ships carried sailors across great freshwater seas. There was a beautiful forest near the edge of a mighty lake. Today, we know that forest as part of Wisconsin, and the mighty lake is called Lake Michigan. But this was a time before many places had names or people. It was a time before farmers and Native Americans planted cherry and apple trees in long, neat rows. It was a time before pioneers planted colorful gardens of pumpkins, potatoes, and corn. In this forest near the edge of the lake lived Mother Bear. Her fur was blacker than the darkest night, and her eyes were large and round. Mother Bear had two cubs, and they were very soft and playful. The three of them lived together in a small, cozy den nestled among bluebells and buttercups. Every morning, as the wood thrush softly sang pip, 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 and chickadees called out chickadee, dee, dee from the trees, Mother Bear and her cubs would lumber through the forest to the banks of the birch-lined stream. Deer would gently bend their slender necks to sip the cool water, and raccoons would quickly wash their faces. Mother Bear and her cubs would step carefully into the stream, and as the fresh, Clear water trickled by, Mother Bear would teach her cubs how to snatch plump, colorful trout for breakfast. Afterward, they would sit lazily on the banks, nibbling blueberries and hazelnuts. Every afternoon, Mother Bear would lead her cubs through the forest to the edge of the mighty lake. This lake was so big, they could not see the other side, and the water seemed to disappear into the sky. The bears would frolic along the sandy shore, happily splashing in the swallows and chasing herring galls. They tugged at each other's tails and took long, cool baths. Every evening, Mother Bear led her cubs back to their warm, cozy den, where she cradled them in her big black paws and held them gently while they went to sleep. One morning, as they were lumbering along to the birch line stream, there was a loud crash of thunder and a sharp hissing sound. Snap! Pop! Mother Bear stood on her hind feet and stuck her nose up in the air. A brilliant orange blaze flashed through the trees, and dark clouds filled the sky. Fire! Mother Bear rushed her cubs to the banks of the stream and ordered them to follow it to the shore of the mighty lake. Bears dashed rapidly, deer sprang back and forth, and wolves ran wildly. Even the star-nosed moles hurried out from beneath the cover of the forest floor. As they reached the shore, Mother Bear gathered her cubs and shouted, Children, we must go! We must swim across the mighty lake, my children! I love you so! They leaped into the water and began to swim. The lake was very deep. The water was cold. The waves were tall and the wind was strong. They paddled hard and fast. Mother Bear pleaded, My children, do you promise that you'll swim with all your might? If we are to reach the other side, we must swim throughout the night. The faithful cubs promised their mother that they would swim with all their might. They swam and they swam, growing weary and tired. They swam as the afternoon sun grew large and warm. They swam as the sun slipped below the horizon and the air grew cold. As they swam, Mother Bear kept turning her large black face to make sure her cubs were not far behind. She watched as their paws struggled against the water, and as their soft round faces became smaller and smaller between the waves of the mighty lake, Mother Bear grew worried. Soon, nighttime fell upon them. The sky grew dark and stars began to shine. 
Suddenly, the air seemed quiet and the water became very still. In the distance, Mother Bear heard the trill of screech owls and the howling of timber wolves. Mother Bear kept looking back as she swam throughout the night. Through her tired eyes, she noticed the morning sun was beginning to rise and cast its bright rays upon the deep blue water. She looked back once more, but could not see her cubs. Mother Bear collapsed on the banks of the shore. Her wet, heavy paws sank into the deep sand. There were rolling hills and huge mounds of sand all around her, and the land seemed very strange. Mother Bear paced up and down the water's edge, but her cubs were nowhere to be found. Her wet fur gleamed in the fresh morning light, and tears shone in her eyes. Mother Bear cried, My children, are you coming? You are strong, and you are clever. My children, can you hear me? I will wait for you forever. Mother Bear climbed to the top of the highest hill. She looked out over the dark, deep water, but saw no sign of her cubs. Mother Bear called throughout the day. My children, can you hear me? I know you must be near. My children, I am waiting, waiting high up here. Mother Bear waited until the sun set, and another night fell upon her. She waited until the sun came up again in the morning. She waited while wild pink roses bloomed all around her, and while baby white-throated sparrows learned how to fly. She waited while the grasses on the distant dune became yellow and dull. She waited while the leaves fell from the beech trees. Mother Bear waited while the air grew colder and snowflakes floated down from thick, dark winter clouds. She waited and waited. Mother Bear waited, but her cubs never reached the shore. And high upon the hill, Mother Bear fell fast asleep in her sorrow. Years passed, and the winds of Lake Michigan blew blankets of sand upon her, keeping her warm and safe in her slumber. Over time, the great spirit of the land felt her sadness, recognizing her dedication and love to her, for her children. With a tremendous gust of wind, the spirit brought the cubs near the shore, raising them out of the water as two magnificent islands, placing them forever within the watchful and caring eyes of Mother Bear. The cubs now stand suspended in time as the North and South Manitou Islands. Happy to be near their mother once again, they rest in the spirit of their mother's love, two islands of gleaming sand edged by waters that sparkle and dance in the sunlight. Now Mother Bear can finally rest with great happiness, knowing her cubs are near. And today, when the world is quiet and the sun begins to set, you can still hear her voice echoing in the wind that blows across Lake Michigan. My children, as the years may pass and time slips through our hands, my love will linger near the shore and in the blowing sands. I'll send you kisses in the wind to let you know I'm here, sleeping near the water's edge. I am always near. My children, you can rest assured that we are now together. That I am watching over you and loving you forever. A Legend a legend is a story created about a certain person or place. Many legends are created as a way of explaining history. Most legends are based in fiction, which means that they are not necessarily true. However, the real magic of a legend exists in the fact that it is a story passed on from generation to generation. In writing The Legend of Sleeping Bear, it was my goal to remind people why this legend is so meaningful and to introduce new generations to the beauty and symbolism that lives on through the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lake Shore. Here is my version of the legend, and may the legend live on in your heart. Kathy Jo Wargan